Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. It's time for a little Robotech, episode 15, Homecoming. This is our Saturday morning react tune, so it's time for us to relax, sit back, watch some classic cartoonage, and see exactly where the story progresses for the SDF-1. Looks like the first arc is kind of wrapped up with the return to Earth. It's time to see where the tale takes us. If you could do me a favor, my friends, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. You'll be alerted when we go live on YouTube. If you want anything that we have early or in its full length format, Patreon links in the description. Don't like Patreon? Join us on YouTube memberships, get everything a day early, plus bonus content for a few of our series. But my friends, all that is then and this is now. And now it's time to sit back and enjoy some cartoons with friends as we watch Robotech episode 15, Homecoming. Prepare to engage maximum warp reaction. And away we go. Uh oh. Fanfare. So with Homecoming, I think that the easiest thing that they could do here is, I'm curious about one thing. I'm curious if they subvert or, um, I don't really subvert Global's authority aboard the SDF-1, but if he now all of a sudden, now they have communications restored with Earth, if he has to start taking commands from kind of a the Earth coalition government, like does he, I mean, I'm assuming he's Captain Global, I'm assuming there's an, oh, excuse me, there is an admiral somewhere that should be, you know, making these calls. We'll see though, I don't know. I don't know how much authority Global has or anonymity, maybe, not anonymity, autonomy, Christ. Oh, there's my favorite characters, the bridge crew. I gotta get me a model. A very I want I want the SDF one. My friend had a model I told you all about. I want that. And I also want to get a Veritech or five. On the flight deck of the huge ship, a military plane waits. Captain Global and First Officer Lisa Hayes board the craft for a flight to the headquarters of the United Earth Government, secretly nice. located in the Alaskan wilderness. Only oh, really? They must convince their governing council of the urgent need for a truce in the undeclared war between the Zentradi forces and the people of Earth. Well, yeah, I mean, truce is, if, if diplomacy can win the day here, it needs to be because... Well, they've lifted off. I wish I was going to... What are you talking about? Do you know how cold Alaska is this time of year or any time of year? <laughs> Good morning, <gasps> ladies. I'd like to... Oh. <laughs> Colonel, are you all right? That doorway is terribly low. I recommend you duck down when coming onto the bridge, sir. Mm. Colonel? I just came up to tell you I'll be commanding the bridge while the captain is off the ship. No more slipping around the rules. What this bridge needs is a good dose of discipline. Oh. You're not out of the smoke. The bridge, sir. What? It's on page two of the ship's rule book, mm. isn't it, sir? Of course. I was only holding. That's exactly what Global said, I thought. Hang in there, girls. <laughs> Yeah, Claudia and Lisa both off the bridge. I don't like that. But Mayor, what about starting the packing? This is no time for packing. We can do that anytime. Now, don't you think we deserve a party after all we've been through? The mayor is full of bad ideas. Well, if you put it that way, I suppose you may be right. Of course I'm right. I don't want to say what that looked like. Punch. Here, you try Oh some. my god, these guys are still there. I love it. Now pretend it's fun. Yay! We finally made it back. We're home again. Great spies. Brand checks in with her fiance Roy Fulker. The months of emergency. Oh, I didn't know they were fiancés. But now that the ship is Roy? back on Earth, she's hopeful that there will be time for the two of them to rekindle their romance. Roy. <laughs> Roy with a, a pinup. <laughs> you just gonna run off? I didn't want to wake you. Forget it. Come here. Oh. You not only get to leave the ship, but you get to spend time with huh? them, huh? Oh, he's got his neckerchief back. I guess that's in Atmo. In Atmo, he has to have the neckerchief. Well, this is quite a turnout for you, Min May. Yes, I suppose these mobs are part of the price one must pay for fame. Oh, for God's sakes. Wonder if she's changed much. The answer is yes. Those are my loyal fans. They follow me uh -oh. everywhere. I just love them. <laughs> hello, hello. I was just complaining about them, but... I love you all very much. <laughs> Thank you. So... Nobody on Earth would even know who the hell she is, right? Now sit down and strap yourself in. Thanks, Rick. It seems like you've become a lot nicer now than when huh? we first met. Huh. Maybe I've grown up. Young man! Nice, Rick. Don't worry. I feel perfectly safe. Rick's a very good pilot. Yes, I'm sure he is, but he's so young, I, uh, If uh, you don't mind, we'll be taking off now. Yeah, dude, get off my ship. My name's Entrati. I've, uh, 
scrubbed. I don't think twice if I murder you. I'm that big a deal. That's, I, I promised that I would be easier on Rick. That was a good exchange for Rick. Somewhere over the Alaskan wilderness. Cool shot. Most of the complex has been built deep underground as a precaution against a direct attack by alien forces. I like this narration. We could have used more of this. It is allowed to descend into the vast underground complex. I like those green and white Veritex. Having fun, Min May? <laughs> Veritex escort approaching at 5 huh? o'clock. Hey, Lieutenant, it's Ben and Max. Hey! <sighs> oh, it's great to get away, but when I get back, I have a whole lot of work to make up. You should see all that they want me to do. Well, tell me about it. When I get back, I've got to do a television show, and then I'm cast in a play. Why, I'm even supposed to do a movie! But where do you get all your energy? I'd be exhausted trying to keep up with a schedule like that one. Huh? What? Uh, Minmay, are you alright? Speak to me! She's asleep. Well, how do you like that? She's asleep. Hmm. Well, she just proved your point, bud. Rick acting a bit more mature here. Will it take long to reach the council chambers? Just a little longer. The shaft goes down another six miles. Wow. Haven't you ever been here before today? Well, my father used to bring me down here. Admiral. Father. Who else was there? He was the visionary. He pushed for the creation of this complex when no one else thought it was necessary. Really? Father was responsible for all this? I didn't know that. Is he still alive, I wonder? He ordered our entire division to raid the food supplies of the commanding general. <laughs> my father got away with that? Really, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly believe it. Lisa needs a good laugh. Most human globals been, too. It's good to hear you laugh again, Commander. Yeah. I hope you've thoroughly prepared your arguments, Commander Hayes. I'm ready to go, Captain. So what's your, what are you proposing? The aliens. Attention. Smoking in this capsule is forbidden. Huh? Please put out your... <laughs> immediately. Can't I smoke anywhere anymore? <laughs> no. When something's bothering you, I notice you always pull out your pipe and start to light it. Hmm. I must confess I'm very worried about this meeting. That's a good notice on that tell. What will happen if we can't convince them? The Earth will go to war against the aliens. And the Zentradi will tear this place apart. Rick Hunter approaches the island of Japan, bringing Minmei back to a home she has not seen in over a year. Okay, over a year. Okay, the kind of a getting conflicting time dates, but over a year is good. Meanwhile, in the conference room of the secret headquarters, Captain Global and Lisa Hayes await the appearance of the governing council. They're not even really there. Twelve and a half months ago, the Space Battle Fortress attempted to execute a hyperspace fold maneuver. Okay, definitely, they're sticking with the year. ...ends the long and detailed story of the events surrounding the violent encounters with the alien forces. We need more narration. This is good. Listen, I'm happy to be home, and if I feel like singing and dancing, I will! But Minmay... Oh, okay. Good! I'm glad it hasn't changed. You haven't been gone very long. Right. Well, it's a year, bud. We're here! This is our restaurant! It's very nice. I hope everybody remembers my face. How could they forget? Minmay, we were sure you'd been killed. No, I'm home. Oh, oh I can't mm. believe it. Our darling little girl is home. They thought she was dead. Wow. This is Rick, mother. He's the boy who saved my life. <gasps> oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, young man. <laughs> Your aunt and uncle are alive, too. We thought you were dead. If you were alive, why didn't you even try to contact us? Hmm? Don't be mad, bud. She's alive. Don't you think you've overestimated the enemy's strength by quite a lot? Yes, I can't help but wonder why the enemy didn't destroy the battle fortress if they have the strength. They won it. Gentlemen, what about the authorization for the requests that were attached to that report? The negotiation plans and the relocation of the 70,000 survivors. We'll discuss your requests at our next regularly scheduled meeting. Okay, so welcome to bureaucracy. There's something going on here we don't know about. Their minds are made up. Oh. Hmm. I'm an important person back there. Well, now you're home, and I'm not letting you go back, and that's that. What about you, young man? What do you think of all this hogwash, huh? Huh? I think I'd like to leave. I think I'd like to walk out of this restaurant. I don't know why you're asking him. His opinion doesn't count here. <laughs> I'd be like, deuces, then. Find your way back to the SDF-1, or not. Hey, what's all the screaming what? about down here? What? I can't concentrate enough to get my studies done, huh? Min May. <gasps> Kyle! Is Kyle a friend or family? Well, I'm glad you're here, even though you're the only one who made it. But your mom and dad are doing just fine running their business. Huh? What? They're alive? Oh, okay, okay. So cousins, right? This is Lieutenant Hunter. He's one of the fighter pilots from the ship. Oh, hello. I'm from the peace movement. I shouldn't like you. Kyle, Rick is the one who saved my life. It was a privilege to do it. I thought soldiers were expected to aid civilians in times of emergency. Uh, 
Ah, oh, good, a bad faith argument. My favorite. So, you decided to join up later, huh? That's right. What do you think's so good about the military? Huh? I'll be seeing myself out. Sorry to have kept you waiting. The council has been going over your report, and we have found most of it to be accurate. Most of it? All negotiations with the enemy for an end to hostilities are flatly rejected. Ah. The point is, we don't understand the alien thinking. We hardly understand their robo-technology. How can we begin peace talks with them? Um, take the chance? Stay prepared and alert. We don't want to give up that advantage through a peace conference. Yes, I understand, sir, but what about resettling the 70,000 survivors? Oh, they're not gonna allow that. So having them leave the ship is out of the question, Global. What? We planted a story that a guerrilla force representing the Anti-Unification League had attacked Macross Island and destroyed it after the ship had left on a test flight. Now, how could we turn around and let 70,000 people who know the truth of what's really going on go back to Earth? I don't know. That's your lie. <laughs> They've gone through a lot, but now they think they're safely back home. Keeping them under control is your responsibility. <laughs> It's crucial you draw the enemy forces away from this planet. At what expense? Captain. You. But we must have time to strengthen our defenses and increase our knowledge of robotechnology, and you're the only ones who can give it to us. Father, this is too much to ask of all those civilians. Oh, I didn't realize that was her dad. And you'll receive further orders in the morning. That is all. Oh, boy. <laughs> but that went well. <laughs> that went really, really well. Lisa, wouldn't you like to spend some time with your father while you're still here? No, sir. I have no particular interest in seeing him right now. I'd feel the same way, to be honest. Minmei's made her decision, so why don't you let her go? You're the last person we'd expect would want to send Minmei away from her home. Oh, Kyle's gonna go with her, isn't he? I thought I would go with her and live with my folks. There we go. Lisa opens a letter from her father, handed to her by one of his aides. My dearest Lisa, I know that you're angry about my decision regarding the ship, but it was unavoidable under the circumstances. Narration is doing wonders for this episode. The Battle Fortress is a very dangerous place, and I'm working on getting you reassigned to another ship. What? That's right. Lisa is first officer of the SDF-1, not to mention a hero. So, two very different groups of people head for a common destination, an alien spaceship that has now become their permanent home. For Lisa Hayes, the trip is a particularly bitter one because her own father is partly responsible for the decision to send over 70,000 people back into space. The narration was very good. All right, my friends, we just got done watching Robotech, episode 15, Homecoming, and the only thing left to do is to talk about it. All right, everyone, just got done watching Robotech, not a season, but episode 15, Homecoming. You know what? Um, This one was... Okay, so again, this is they had to do a lot kind of to rush through what the arrival of the SDF-1 meant for everybody. And I think they did an exceptional job with it. And I'm going to tell you what they really, uh, you know what I'm going to say here. The narrator adds a ton of context to these episodes. I really wish they had been utilizing the narrator earlier because, you know, just the explanation of where they're going, what they're doing, you know, with Lisa and uh, Global going up to Alaska, um, explaining in narration what the, the uh, you know, six miles down and what it looked like and blah, blah, blah. Really well done because it, it keeps us in the moment. It keeps us thinking about what's going on. They don't have to animate it. They're telling us about the things that are going on. We don't have to have a conversation that involves dialogue. We get internal thoughts with the letter. Things like that really w work out. And providing those context kind of points, those time stamps. So, you know, like emotional time stamps and like uh, episodic time stamps with the narration are just, they do a lot to tighten everything up. And I think that's why this episode came across so well. We knew exactly where everybody was. It didn't rely on the animation to kind of point us in the right direction. And as you all have told me, with the different studios coming in, sometimes they have different interpretations of common locales. I always think about that time when we had what I assume was the bridge at one point that looked completely different on the SDF-1. And then we had like different places in the SDF-1 that they put out. The, the this Macross City looks different inside the SDF-1. So with the narration, that's giving us a really like, hey, you are definitively here. And that's not something that needs to be drawn up, you know, literally or, or figuratively. It's something that can be presented to us in the narration and we can move past it and get, get more story out of it. And another thing, too, with narration and especially the shorter kind of windows that we have of actual new content coming out in each of these episodes, we always have a recap. We always have a coming soon. And then that, that meet in the middle 
with narration, they're able to kind of like really inject it with a lot of story information, um, kind of keep us interested, keep us moving, which just sounds ridiculous with a short episode like that. But it does, you know, especially when we have two points or two locales with the, the uh, unified Earth base on Alaska and then over in Japan, you know, visiting Minmei's home and everything. That was really, I mean, they introduced a character in Kyle. Um, you know, we got, we even got a little bit of Claudia and Roy in there, found out Claudia and Roy are engaged. I don't think we knew that before. Um, but seeing them together is awesome. I hope they fold Roy back into it. It's been a hot minute since we've seen Roy. Um, but it, it really did a great job of just like saying, hey, here we're, I always look at these things, you know, we have these in several of the series, like Lower Decks and The Expanse do this too. And this is a good example of Robotech doing it um, with narration. It's a check-in episode. It's like you spin around the room and you point to each person and say, you, what are you doing? Oh, I'm working on, I'm writing a book. You know, what are you doing? Oh, I have a new job. You know, and they go around, they kind of bring us all up to speed on what everybody is doing and what the new problems are. We're back home brand new problems. You know, of course, the Earth government's going to be choked with bureaucracy. They don't believe. Le Boy, you know what? I had no clue that Lisa's dad was on the governing council of, you know, vid screens. When they broke during the, the events of the capture on, in the Zentradi ship and Lisa dropped the, uh, the camera that had all of like the, the view of the armada and all the kind of information on it. And she goes, oh my, I failed my mission. You know, I, I, I lost it. I thought, Damn, Lisa, you know, you you just gave your report. You, your eyes are probably more trustworthy than even the video. Ben said the same thing. I think it was Ben or Rick said, you know, hey, we still have our reports that we can give. And Lisa was like, she seemed adamant that the, the, the mission had been a failure. Well, now I know why. The, unless they saw it with their own eyes, they didn't believe it. You've overestimated the enemy's forces. If anything... She probably underestimated them because, you know, just visually looking out on this group of ships, you know, I mean, it's it's in immense. They they destroyed a planet just to show that they could destroy a planet. And yet the governing council doesn't believe I knew they were going to do that, though. I knew they were going to be like, you know what? Everything was kind of hunky dory when the SDF one was not on Earth. Um Everybody seemed to be fixated. The, the Armada was there, but they didn't do anything to us. So would you mind kind of just, you know, going back out there, going back out in space, you know, flying around for 10, 15 years while we work on research and do some R&D? Um, and that's exactly what they wanted, which is crazy. And again, I, I've said this before. I was hard on Global at the beginning of this series. Um, I've definitely warmed to him, understood what they were doing as far as, you know, kind of making sure that we all knew that the SDF-1 was not ready for prime time and Global's actions were one of desperation, not of poor command, you know, which I misinterpreted at first. Um, but now I'm going to give credit, too, because I'm tough as shit on Rick, and I mean to be. I mean to be tough on him because I want him to mature. I want him to show a little bit of growth that, you know, he's kind of coming around. He's, he's, he's acting a little bit uh, like a, a commander should. And I think we really saw some of that. I mean, sure, he got jealous of Kyle there towards the end and whatnot, and a little, like, snappy and whatnot. But, you know, he, he's really doing a good job of making sure in this episode— he didn't really step on a, you know, he, he didn't really uh, put his foot in his mouth, as I'm trying to stutter and um, say here. He didn't really, you know, say anything that was truly immature or obnoxious, like he sometimes drops down. And normally when he gets with Min Mei, that's when those sparks start to fly. Or when he's dealing with Lisa, I should say, too. Had a little bit of uh, Ben and Max, which kind of reaffirms how Rick has grown up a little bit. Ah, those jokesters, you know, or all those guys that are always fooling around, you know. But those are his guys. Those are his guys. And, um, you know, I think he feels a strong camaraderie to them and also a position of authority, which we're starting to see in the, the, the writer's dialogue that's given to Rick and Rick's own actions. I always hesitate to say this because every time Rick takes a step forward in my mind, like the next episode or so, he'll take like two or three steps back. But I have to be positive with Rick. Rick is starting to come. In my mind, I've seen more good stuff from him in the last couple episodes than I've seen kind of cringy or, geez, Rick, you know, uh, you're going backwards. I, I, he's making progress, everyone. He's starting to move forward. And um, while Min May seems to be very hell, she is hell bent on staying exactly where she is. She wants to be a movie star. She wants to be. And you know what? As obnoxious as she can be sometimes, which is 
almost all the time, she's understandable. I under I I I don't relate to Min May, but I understand the allure of what Min May's going through. She's a kid. She's 16 or 17 now at this point, and she's been afforded this incredible notoriety. You know, she's famous aboard the SDF1. She's making music, doing TV shows, making movies. You know, of course it's, she's going to, that goes to anybody's head. That's going to go to anyone's head. If all of a sudden everyone's telling you you're the best person ever. And so she's acting that way, but she's not like truly reprehensible. She's not like, uh, she just says stuff that makes you go, oh yeah, she's a kid. You know? Oh yeah. Right. She's young. Okay. Absolutely. Gotcha. So I like having Min May around every once. I like, she like orbits around into the episodes, like once every two or three, you know, four, she comes around and, and checks in with everybody. And um, you're reminded of just what type of character Min May is. But again, a lot of you have told me that um, in the original, like Macross, Min May is much better. Like her dialogue is much better. Her songs are better. She has more songs. Um, I am definitely checking all of that stuff out as soon as I'm done with this. Because I really want to see what was the original intent was for a lot of these characters. Um, and honestly, what I want to see is the original intent versus what they thought North American audiences wanted. And if it's kids wanted, I want to see what they were kind of catering to with any changes they make. Because in my mind, that says less about what they are putting into the characters' mouths as to what they think the audience, what they think of the audience. So, you know, if they, they kept a lot of these heavy themes, so it's not like they dumbed it down, but um, I'm really curious. I'm really curious to see what the, how the, the mood or, you know, the temperature between the two d deliveries actually like, what's the translate there? I really, really want to see that. But my friends, great episode. Can't wait to see the next one. Battle Cry. Sounds like we might have some Veritech action. I hope to see Max back up there doing his ace shit. And uh, we do have a Zentradi ace now. And um, I mentioned to somebody online, I'm really looking forward to Max as the ace. And uh, Miria, I think, is her, the green-haired Zentradi. I want to see them going at it because we finally got eight, an ace on the other side. We had Chiron, but Chiron and Max never really went at it. Um, but if, uh, you know, Miria has defined herself or has been defined as the Zentradi ace. Max has been defined as the Micronian ace. Can't wait for the two to meet. My friends, if you do me a favor, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, ringy ding ding that bell for notifications, and you'll be alerted anytime we go live with Saturday Morning React Tunes or any of our sci-fi offerings. And of course, if you'd like those offerings early or in their full-length format, the link to the Patreon is in the description. But all that is then, my friends, and this is now. Now it is time to say goodbye as we get ready to boldly go into this new leg of Robotech and see exactly what troubles face the SDF-1 crew on Earth as opposed to the known troubles that they face in space. But my friends, until next time, Vulcan roll. And I'll see you.